Y'all want to talk about goats? Y'all want to talk about greatest of all time? No. Today we talk about Ray J, y'all. AKA, we got Usher at home. Like and subscribe. Now, some people might consider him quite mid. Some might say his vocals aren't there. Some people say he sounds like a small dog doing karaoke. Despite all that, this dude has had an insanely successful career, platinum singles, hit television shows, dating Whitney Houston somehow randomly. What exactly is it about Ray J? What dark secrets are we going to uncover? Is he an industry plant? Is he a killer like Henry was? He a killer just like Henry was. Let's take a look at the man himself, the king of all short kings, Ray J. So his real name is William Ray Norwood Jr. He was born in Macomb, Mississippi. What the hell is that? Macomb, Mississippi has got a population oh of God. about 12,000 people. Wow, bro. How do y'all even function out there? That's nothing. If this video got 12,000 views, I would cry. There's not enough people. But his dad is a gospel singer named Willie Norwood. And of course, you know his much more famous, more talented sister, Brandy Norwood, AKA, the whole reason this nigga is famous. Not to mention, him and Brandy have an even more famous cousin named Snoop Dogg E. Dog. Snoop Dogg E. Dog is my cousin. I must say, Snoop, what's going on? How you doing? Snoop, you so cute. Hi, hi, hi. You know, I'm glad you in my family, Snoop. All right, let's crack a like it. Now, in Ray J's defense, his first big role had nothing to do with Brandy or Snoop Doggy Dog. I don't think. He started off doing little commercial gigs and in 1993 he was cast as the foster son on the hit sitcom The Sinbad Show. Of course Sinbad had a show. It even lasted a whole entire season. And it had Selma Hayek in it? Okay. Sinbad. Bro, I'm really about to get to your pickle chin now, boy. Oh hell though, this nigga really named Willie Norwood. Country ass, Waffle House ass name. He not selling no R&B records with that name. I'm glad you changed it. Also, Sinbad is like a video game designer or something named Dave. Yeah, one season is enough of that. Once the Sinbad show was over, Ray J ended up signing to Elektra Records in 1995 and recorded his debut album, Everything You Want. He was only 14 years old at the time, which is wild, bro. I couldn't even imagine that, getting a record deal and being famous that young. Meanwhile, speaking of famous, his older sister Brandy was blowing the fuck up on the music scene. She released her debut album a year earlier in 1994 and it peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Top 200. And in 1996, Brandy got her own sitcom for some reason, Moesha. Why did she get her own sitcom again? Her ass ain't funny, bro. They was just handing these bitches out to anybody that was popping. Lucky for everybody involved though, Moesha was a huge hit, and of course, Brandy would wanna shoehorn her little brother into the show three separate times. This nigga popped up as three different characters. They were determined to put this nigga on. Okay, the coast is clear, Dory. It's D money, dog. Okay, D money, dog. <laughs> oh my God, you're Ray J. You are. <laughs> no, I'm like you, Paul, the same. Are you down, Q, man? We're gonna have a lot of fun and games. And Gee whiz, Charles, I don't know. <laughs> he was Charles, he was himself, and he was Dorian. This deep money, dog. Most people probably didn't even notice. I didn't notice. It's not like we could binge watch this shit back in the day. But yeah, looking back on it, it is bizarre. It feels insulting almost. Like we so dumb, continuity doesn't even matter. I mean, I didn't notice, so I guess it's true. Fuck it. Not to mention, this nigga high key ruined the show in the end. Once he became Dorian, the show focused mostly on him. The final episode of the series was all about him and barely had Moesha in it. You should watch my review I did on that. I did a review on Moesha last episode. Like, subscribe. Y'all didn't come here for none of this, though. Y'all want me to get to Ray J's most infamous moment. That's right. I'm talking about the Dr. Doolittle soundtrack, y'all. What the fuck is that? <laughs> that shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airway.
I'm not gonna lie, bro. That's one of the worst songs I ever heard in my life. One more time, please. That shit is crazy. I, I don't. I, I really don't like that. Ray J got dropped from his label in 1997, thank God. He made some songs with Brandy that did well overseas, but he wouldn't make another full album until 2001. The album was called This Ain't A Game, generic title. It's got that one song, Wait A Minute, that bouncy ass 2000s club song. Y'all remember this? His third album, Radiation, with a Y. Oh God, I can't with this nigga, man. His third album, Radiation, in 2005, was his most successful to date. It's the album that has One Wish on it. Everybody loved that song, right? Oh. Also in 2005, he ruined another classic black sitcom, One on One. They put this nigga on the show and it got canceled right after. Same with Moesha. Don't put Ray J in your damn sitcoms. That shit's gonna get canceled, 100%. Yeah, finals are over and school is out. And I get to lay around in my drawers all day, made in China. <laughs> Go in the house. Now, this one definitely wasn't his fault. The show was ruined already. Soon as they left Flex dumbass in Baltimore. He's the main character, bro. I'm still hurt about that. Why'd they change one on one? But now we get to the big moment. Kim K's career. Y'all already know, man. It all started with this weak ass Boost Mobile sex tape. It took the world by storm for some reason. I don't get it. D list celebrities having sex. Oh, oh man. Oh, that's so crazy. No, this was a very new thing celebrity sex tapes. You had Paris Hilton sex tape doing numbers. You had R. Kelly tape. That's not cool. Don't watch that one. This episode of Prim's Hood Cinema is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is here to take the ass a lot of mealtime this summer by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy to make recipes right to your door. Their calorie smart and protein smart lunch and dinner options will have you looking nice and slim for the summer, assuming you work out and everything. I don't know your life. Plus, their new vegan recipes are in too. Now is a better time than ever to start up HelloFresh. Grocery shopping is trash. It's not the 80s no more. HelloFresh comes with foolproof instructions and high quality proteins and veggies. Even if you're not much of a chef, you'll be whipping up all kinds of food in no time. Their pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on food waste and is cheaper than grocery shopping. I'm a big fan of their fast and fresh options. I can knock dinner out in like 15 minutes or less. I love that. I'm hella impatient sometimes, most of the time. It's getting hot outside. Nobody trying to go to the grocery store, bro. Do yourself a favor, go to hellofresh.com slash prim16 and use the code prim16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Again, it's hellofresh.com slash prim16. Use the promo code prim16 and you get 16 free meals and free shipping. Thank you for sponsoring HelloFresh. You America's number one meal kits. All right, what was I talking about? I forgot what I was talking about. Ray J and Kim Kardashian's mid-ass tape. Why is everything this nigga do so mid? There's a lot of mystery still surrounding this tape, even after all these years. Kris Jenner and the Kardashian clones are claiming that Ray J is solely responsible for leaking the tape. Kris Jenner even hooked herself up to this fake-ass lie detector test and everything. Did you help Kim release her sex tape? No. True. Of course it's true! <laughs> Ray J claims it's all cap and he says it was Kris Jenner who leaked the tape. He even went as far as to pull up this sex contract they all signed. What the fuck is wrong with people? You want to see the sex tape contract? There go the sex tape contract. There, there it is. There's the whole thing, right? That's the set. That's my handwriting. That's it, right? This is the sex tape full contract. They done already breached the contract by talking about it. So let's talk about it. Something I discovered I didn't know, Ray J actually dated Kim Kardashian for five whole years before the tape even came out. Five years, bro? That's a real ass relationship. I swear, I thought it was a Boost Mobile booty call. Kim Kardashian used to be Brandy's stylist and homegirl back in the day, fun fact. She also used to hang out with Paris Hilton and do all sorts of clout chasing activities, just desperately trying to climb that celebrity ladder. I think Brandy stopped hanging out with her, not because of the tape, but because Kim Kardashian actively scammed Brandy out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. No bullshit. Soon as soon as the world found out, well not even the world cause Brandy didn't even say nothing, but as soon as y'all stole all that money from my sister, 
and the court granted my sister to the win and y'all had to pay my sister back up what 700,000 something like that y'all stole like 850,000 from my sister this on my kids y'all got caught y'all got was y'all was guilty you had to pay my sister back Kim like man keep my name out of it right I'm like I don't ever want to talk to you again you stole from my sister so even though I'm fucking you and the sex tape already out and we like doing what we doing I can't never talk to you again after that that was it Long story short, Kim Kardashian was working for Brandy. She used Brandy's credit card and bought a bunch of stupid shit. She used the card at her family store and even gave out the number to other people, allegedly. That's a cold ass scam, bro. I would expect nothing less. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. All that drama coupled with the sex tape started a feud between Ray J and the Kardashians that's still going today, despite nobody giving a fuck. That's not the end of Ray J's saga. He lost his girlfriend, Kim Kardashian, but he got 20 new girlfriends when he launched his VH1 dating show for the love of Raycons. I mean, Ray J. Y'all got a chance to talk to each other at all? Oh yeah, I yeah, talked to pretty much everybody. You did? Yeah. yeah. So w what you think about Lovely over there? She liked that wine over there. <laughs> oh wow, this little nigga need a booster seat or something. Why they put him in his big ass chair? It makes him look way smaller. This nigga need a high chair. For the love of Ray J went on for two seasons. I don't think he picked a wife or whatever he was supposed to do on the show. Go figure. Does anybody ever stay together after these shows? Not to mention, you might want to stay away from the clout chasers, Ray J. One of them just finessed your stupid ass boy. Why are you inviting more of that? That's what they do on these shows. For the love of Ray J got a spinoff with him and Brandy. It was called Brandy and Ray J Family Business. I didn't watch it. I couldn't tell you what the hell was going on. It looks boring as shit. Another Ray J reality show, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. That's not boring as shit. 10 out of 10. If your song sucks, we're not playing it. So obviously all my songs suck. In addition to all the reality shows, Ray J wound up dating Whitney Houston for a little bit. Their relationship wasn't super public and there's still not much info on them, but they were spotted together as early as 2010 and they were still a couple in 2012 when she died. RIP Whitney Houston. Ray J claims to have turned down million dollar interviews out of respect for Whitney. Everybody was trying to get some weird dirt on her. You know how they do. That's a good move, Ray J. I respect that. It still didn't stop the Houston family from giving this nigga the beats and sending his ass to the hospital after the 2012 Billboard Awards. It says Ray J and the Houston family were seated in the same section and the family was not fucking with that. They even tried to have Ray J arrested for some reason. That's not how police work, bro. Plus, he more famous than you. They're gonna take his side. Another one of Ray J's physical altercations involved legendary Brooklyn rapper Fabulous. Ray J socked Fabulous in the mouth for making jokes on Twitter. Unbelievable, bro. I figured Fabulous could take Ray J, right? I would've lost some money on that one. Niggas, niggas saying Ray J got beat up. I socked that nigga in the face, my nigga. So you punched Fab in the face? One time. You, hey, all I'm saying is if you got Fab number, tell that nigga to send a picture of his face right now. Yeah, he got, this one clicked he in my head. Him, what this the one clicked in my head while he's talking to me. Right. What's I wrong with this nigga? Ray J is pressing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I went back to the hood for a second. I said, oh, shit. Ray J is pressing me right now. <laughs> Ray J got arrested after that. He apologized to Fabulous since then, and I'm guessing that's all squashed. Another hilarious Ray J arrest. In 2014, Ray J was at a hotel bar in Beverly Hills. Some lady accused him of touching her ass, and the police got involved in everything. They told Ray J he had to leave, and apparently he got so heated, he spit at the damn cops and kicked out a police car window. He got charged with vandalism, resisting arrest, and battery against a police officer. This nigga a savage low-key. So that's all past Ray J. What about current day Ray J? Nowadays, Ray J is considered a high-profile tech entrepreneur, thanks to his Raycon brand earbuds and his tech company, Raytronics. God, you think he'd be more creative with the names at this point. You've been an entertainer for 30 years, nigga. In January 2022, he had a meeting with none other than oh former President Donald Trump at his Mar-a-Lago club in Florida for some reason. They met up again two months later in March and Ray J brings Kodak Black with him. What the fuck would Ray J and Donald Trump have to talk about, seriously? Being reality TV niggas? This nigga Ray J about to run for president. President Ray J, wow. 
Those got a nice ring to it, bro. I'm not gonna lie. So obviously all my songs suck. We've gone from the Sinbad show to the singing to the sex tape to the Raytronics. President Ray J. So is Ray J an industry plant? The answer is, I don't know, kinda. I wasn't even looking at that. It's more of a nepotism thing it looks like, if I had to call it. Not everybody can get dropped by their label, pump out mostly mid-ass music, and still tour with Brandy around the world like shit is sweet. A lot of his opportunities came from his family, and I doubt he would be famous if it wasn't for Brandy, but he took all those opportunities he got and built his own career and his own brand and his own empire at this point. Brandy got him in the door, but once he was in there, he made his own way. That's very respectable. Shout out to Ray J, bro. He was a child star that didn't go crazy, so that's always a W. You must have a good team behind you. I understand Ray J a lot more now having done this. Definitely want to see him winning. So that's the history of Ray J for no reason. I don't know why I made this video, but I'm glad I did. Ray J is an interesting nigga. Who else is a funny ass celebrity I could cover? Let me know down in the comments. I'll be back next week with some more Primps Hood Cinema. Thanks for sticking with this one till the end. It's a new format I'm trying out. I'm trying out new things. Let me know what you thought. Check out my movie reviews all on my channel. Check out my Twitch channel. We live stream terrible reality shows on there. Low key, I'm sure that's what sparked this video now that I'm thinking about it. Shout out to my Patreon homies. Shout out to my sponsor, HelloFresh. And that's it. All right, video's over.